guys, this is Clara Hudson of Wall Day Play Designs and today I'm going to be showing you how to do the slip stitch for the Desert Poppy Cowl and you'll find a link to download this pattern on the description for this video. Um, but in order to make this pattern, there is a series of slip stitches as you can see here and they just alternate. We have a series of three slip stitches followed by a knit two. And this particular pattern is written to be worked completely in the round, so it is absolutely seamless. This is not knit flat and then seamed together. It's just knit in the round, and there's a constant spiral that occurs in this stitch pattern. And in the pattern, I will show you how to actually alternate the stitches, and what you'll be doing is just moving your stitch marker so that you can continue on with this particular stitch pattern because it does shift in the pattern. As you can see, these appear to be little, almost like an arrowhead shape that goes to the right and then it shifts to the left, right and then left. And each one of these shifts is separated by a row of knit stitches. But I will show you in the pattern, I have written instructions and also a chart. So it will show you exactly how to create that shift in the pattern. But for this video, I want to just show you how to create those series of slip stitches. So on this particular cowl, I've went ahead and created all my rows and I'm actually at the final row before the bind off. And I do tell you in the pattern to keep track of your end of your rounds with a stitch marker and I will indicate in the chart and the written instructions when to slip this stitch marker and there will be a point in the pattern there are certain rows where you'll need to change your end of round just so you can keep up with this uh, stitch pattern that we have and when I indicate these spots in the pattern it will tell you to slip one either one or two stitches with your yarn in the back and then you'll replace your stitch marker. So for those instances, you'll just remove your marker and let's pretend that we're just slipping one stitch here. You'll slip it purl wise with the yarn in the back and then you'll simply put your stitch marker back into place. And the same for slipping two, as in, it'll indicate in the chart, you just remove your stitch marker and then with the yarn in back, You'll slip two purl wise and then you'll put your stitch marker back. So that's how we slip our stitches with the yarn in the back. But for this row, in this stitch pattern, we're just going to be slipping three stitches and then knitting two. And this is pretty much going to remain the same throughout the entire cowl pattern. As I said, I will let you know in the instructions whether you're going to be starting with knit one slip three and then knit two slip three knit two some of the rows just start with slip three knit two and others will start with knit two slip three so those will all be indicated in the pattern so you don't have to worry about that but for this particular row it's the last row of our cowl and we're going to be slipping three stitches with our yarn in front and then knitting two and that's our repeat for the entire round so we'll put our yarn in the front of our work and you'll just keep a nice steady tension however you are used to knitting. I'm knitting continental style. So I'll show you, you just place your yarn in the front. You'll insert your needle from right to left purl wise through the next three stitches. And then you'll slip those off the left hand needle onto the right hand needle. Okay, and you can see our yarns in the front. Now we'll place it in the back and you can see those are our slipped stitches. And like I said, you just want to keep a nice even tension. You don't want to pull tightly. And then we'll insert our needle into the next stitch and just knit as normal. And that's a knit too. So you can see here, there's our first series of slipped stitches, three slip stitches followed by a knit two. So we'll repeat that and yarn in the front slip three purl wise, then yarn in the back and knit two. 
and you'll see in our pattern, this is what creates this pretty little almost herringbone look, but I, I see it as more of a, an arrowhead stitch. Just looks like a series of arrows going to the left and then the right. But that's how we create that, just by slipping three, the yarn in front, and knitting two. And I want to go ahead and show this to you if you're used to knitting English style with your yarn coming from the right and you throw your yarn. It's just as easy. Place your yarn in the front as if to purl, then insert your needle from right to left purl wise into the next three stitches and just slip those onto your right hand needle. Now you'll place your yarn in the back as you would when you're ready to knit and then insert your needle. Keep a nice even tension as I mentioned before and then we'll knit two just normally. So you can see it's pretty much the same we're just slipping three and knitting two. I'll do that again. Yarn in the front, slip three purl wise. Yarn in the back, keep a nice even tension here, and then knit two. And there we go. And you will find that this may take a little bit of practice to make sure that your tension is pretty nice and even. If you take a look at the cowl here, we don't have any puckering of the stitches because we didn't pull that yarn too tightly. And it's also not too loose throughout the pattern. In fact, you don't even have to block this cowl when you're finished with it. It's, it just gives a nice even texture and it creates a fabric that doesn't pucker at all. But I will mention that for this stitch pattern, I do give you a gauge swatch to do in the round. You can use either Magic Loop or a set of DPNs for that. But I do give instructions and measurements for what that gauge should, should be. And this is just a great opportunity for you to practice the stitch, make sure that your all of your slip stitches are nice and even. And then you can measure that and make sure that you're getting a pretty even gauge along with what I got. But another tip that I'd like to give you guys is when you're doing this stitch, it is helpful for you to use needles that have a nice point to them. Uh, Dollar needles are not gonna work as well when you're slipping stitches. It's a lot easier to get in there with a nice pointed needle. And also use um, a pretty slippery needle. These are actually Knitter's Pride Rosewood uh, Symphony. And they just have a beautiful sheen to them. They're not too slippery, but they're not gonna, your yarn is not gonna catch on them. And they, they stay nice and warm in your hands. They're pretty comfortable to knit with. But that is how we do the slip stitch on the Desert Poppy Cow. I hope this helps you guys out.